Grant Searle's multi-comp FPGA implementation of the Superboard produced some nice video. It is 48 columns by 16 rows. That's quite a bit better than the 24 by 24 of the original Superboard. Grant's Superboard implementation for video drove, drives video out on the composite uh, circuit, which has some Pretty, pretty serious limits as far as uh, screen bandwidth and let's take a look at why that's the case. First it's worth noting how efficient that particular implementation is. It only uses 768 bytes of memory to store the screen data. Grant has also come out with an enhancement to the video for 64 columns and 32 rows. This enhancement only requires an extra 1k and there's plenty of uh, space left inside the FPGA even with 16k of program RAM. Here's what that video looks like. Uh, maybe you'll notice the first problem here is that the top five rows are missing off the screen. The bottom row is where the cursor is. But this is due to the very nature of the kind of video encoding Grant used. Grant lives in the United Kingdom and they have PAL encoding so they have more lines per frame than the US NTSC. NTSC encoding is used in North America and the coast the west coast of South America. Much of the rest of the world uses PAL encoding and a third format is CECOM. The key difference between NTSC encoding and PAL encoding is the number of lines per frame. Because PAL runs at 50 Hertz like the power in Europe and NTSC runs at 60 Hertz like the power in the United States, there is more time to produce lines in the PAL format and thus those source of displays have more lines which makes the 32 row uh, option not work. An important part of all of this is the font selected and the fonts are 8 by 8 pixels on the screen so that affects how many columns and rows you can place because you need the whole all 8 times 8 64 bits to be presented for the video to be intelligible. Another aspect of the screen quality is the bandwidth and if you notice PAL has a 7 to 8 megahertz bandwidth and NTSC has a 6 megahertz bandwidth. So if you're putting up pixel at the 50 megahertz clock rate, even if you repeat the same pixel several times, uh, it still uh, reduces the bandwidth. Uh, 50 megahertz divided by 4 is still 12 and a half megahertz which is above the ability of NTSC to resolve and produces uh, sort of not sharp fonts. One of the nice features of this board is that it does have a VGA connector and all the connections back to the FPGA. And if you use the VGA connector, you, we wouldn't have to connect up external resistors for the video and the sync. The standard resolution that every VGA monitor supports is 640 by 480 and with an 80 or 8 by 8 font that would be 80 columns and as many as 60 rows. Now Grant has code for the VGA monitor for other CPUs but the interface is different. Rather than being a memory mapped interface it operates more like the UART interface itself. The other complication is the monitor software, the software that drives the system to uh, display only can recognize that 2K of memory at least not without a lot of work. Uh, due to the limitations of the way the system was originally built. So getting above 6, 64 columns by 32 rows would be extremely difficult and there would be no software support for it really. VGA timing itself is fairly simple to do and you could basically do it with two counters, a horizontal counter and a vertical counter and the counters would only need to be 9 bits because the screen resolution uh, actually maybe 10 bits because I think it's over 512 lines and over 512 columns but basically it'd be pretty simple and then it would just be a matter of picking off the right counter bits for what the pixel addresses are. This is what the timing looks like with the display time and the retrace time as well as the sinks. Here's another view of the timing and more oriented towards the screen rather than the timing side like the previous slide was, but all of these times are well documented to operate monitors reliably. This is what Grant's 80 by 25 screen looks like 
on a TV screen that has a VGA input and it's nice and sharp video um, definitely good resolution but I want the 32 rows so this even if it didn't have the interface issue it's still not exactly something that would correspond to the 64 by 32 that Grant provided with the uh, software patches that he has as well as the sort of native modes of the UA super board itself this display is using a different 8x8 font it's the font that Neil Crook came up with for the 6809 based version he made of the board it's a sans serif font I like the way it looks I may switch to this font for the super board so I went ahead and recoded Grant's code to drive the VGA connector instead of driving out on pins and making an external composite summer circuit and note that there isn't enough um, pixels to be fill the whole screen um, just because of the way the numbers multiplied out but this is what it looks like with 32 rows on a VGA monitor also the fact that the VGA has color let me set the background to blue and the characters to white which is a preferred preference of my own I really like the way this looks um, it's clearer in real life than it is here on the camera shot I took of this TV screen you can see that there are 64 columns displayed here uh, the first pixel row is clipped off I'm gonna go try to figure out what that is but the cursor is at the bottom so it's showing the whole screen and this is really the desired effect that I wanted it's a nice viewable display I can see it from uh, five or six feet away even on a small 15 inch television and it looks very sharp the again the white on blue background is really pretty I think it it really makes the screen much more readable and less fatiguing on the eyes I've uploaded the VHDL code for this to my github and I'll put up a link for that so that you can grab it if you want to go with VGA instead of uh, the monochrome circuit that was based for the Super 2 and Grant's design. Um, I think this is a good enhancement. It it's definitely fits within the Super Board's uh, understanding in the code that's there. Like View it like BIOS, basically. It only knows about certain kinds of resolutions, and this fills the full 2K of memory. It gives 64 columns. It gives 32 rows. It looks sharp and uh, definitely fills a need. I think it's a better approach than going with a composite approach. Here's the composite approach again, just to <laughs> see the contrast between the two. Quite a bit better, I think, on a VGA display. Um, certainly more crisp, I think, even though the characters are much smaller. I think they're pretty sharp. Hopefully, I've contributed a little bit something to the project here that quite a people, a few, <laughs> quite a few other people, have put a lot of work into. Uh, it'd be nice to get other enhancements and kind of get a best of the breed of all the things that people have done with this particular design. If you want more information you can see our wiki pages for these products and we have YouTube videos on them as well. We have a store in Tindy where we sell all of our cards. Thanks for watching our video and if you enjoyed it don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.